As we began our structures unit in grade seven this year, students were amazed by the popsicle stick bridges structures that lined the classroom from years gone by. There would be no popsicle stick bridges, I told the class, and at first I was met by some questions. Even though during the unit we had done hands-on labs using straws and wood materials, they still asked me, why not? And here was my opportunity. In this computer-based project, students would work under the premise of a problem, using problem-based learning pedagogy to understand and use computer software to design and build bridge structures. Here at HCS on the West Point Bridge Design software, we learn about four types of bridges. In this project, when students use the West Point Bridge Design software, they are exploring the world of engineering through an innovative bridge design software that brings together their love of technology, their knowledge of science, and the engineering behind these structures. The purpose of this project is to redesign a bridge that has once failed using the steps in the engineering design process. Okay, so what are you working on today? Working on building the Okay, a truss bridge for the lowest price. What does that mean you have to do first? Uh, um, low foundation. Okay, you need a low base. Excellent. What about putting the joints in? Here, I'm prompting a student to go through the process of identifying the need or problem. They then document the need and begin designing the solution using the programming method of West Point Bridge Design. Then, they're able to really redesign the bridge based on their own learning. See? We learn where the compression, tension, and all the parts work using a computer. And we also need to try and make it the cheapest cost possible. Here, I'm working with a student to help them work through a set of design challenges in order to meet a set of requirements that I've set out at the beginning of the class. That keeps their engagement level high as they're competing within school teams. We cooperate in teams to help finish the design challenges and we get to make the successful bridges, such as the beam, arch, truss, and suspension. The student then goes on to say, this is better than a popsicle stick bridge because you can see the different colors, red and blue, showing the tension and compression. Once students are done designing for the day, they have the opportunity to reflect in their science journals. For instance, one student wrote, Today my partner and I had a very successful day. We lowered our costs by lowering the arch, changing the beams that were under tension to be hollow and thin, and making sure the structures under compression were very thick. This shows to me a high level of critical thinking and the ability for students to learn from their processes. Um, how we get marked on this project is we show our classmates how much tension and compression is in our bridge. On top of student presentations, they are also assessed on the virtual model of the bridge that they create, their presentations and how they explain themselves during their design, and the documentation of their engineering design process in their science reflective journals. This class is innovative, creative, and collaborative because of the technology that we use, the students that are part of the classroom, and myself eager to facilitate the learning. Using this software to complete the problem in this project is highly effective because students are challenged to creatively blend science, technology, engineering, and math concepts to think critically about budget, forces such as tension and compression, and the design of their bridge. The problem of redesigning a failed bridge drives their learning, which is the essence of why problem-based learning works well for these students. It both motivates and ingrains deep learning during the project and for a long time afterwards.